Well, bless his holy and majestic name. I'm talking about the Heavenly Father. Bless his holy and majestic name. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus. Bless his holy and majestic name. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Our deity, our divinity, our almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. The all-knowing, the everywhere present, and the omnipotent, all-powerful God. We serve the God that created the heavens and the earth. The Elohim, the magistrates, the rulers, the divine ones, the creators. Oh God, you got to go to Genesis 1-1 for that one. That's the Hebrew word Elohim. What a mighty God we serve. The rulers, the judges, the magistrates. New Testament terminology, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Now we get ready to go into this thing and we're going to jump in. As I was preparing for today's message, the Lord just basically said, you're still teaching on giant killer, but he said, tell the people they are in charge on the battlefield of life. You, my brother, you, my sister, you are in charge on the battlefield of life. And let me tell you something, life is a battlefield and we are in charge because of Jesus, because of the word of God, because of the desires of the Father God, they have positioned us and equipped us to be in charge. Satan is not in charge. Satan is not in charge of your life. Satan is not in charge of your outcomes. And Satan is not in charge of the input that God has released into your life. Your incomes is not in Satan's charge. Your outcomes and incomes, your very life, has been ordained by God. There's a blueprint made by Almighty God, from God, for you, for me. The Holy Spirit said, talk to him today. I'm going to talk to you today as a representative of Almighty God, encouraging you, sharing with you the blessed reality of having God's promises active and in charge in your life so that you can be in charge of the battlefield of life. And again, Life is a battlefield. We have an enemy, but I'm thanking God so much because God has given us promise of support. God has given us promise of strength. God has given us promise of wisdom. I'm talking about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They have given us and proven that their word works when it's believed. All things are possible to him that believes. And I'm telling you right now, all things are possible with God. So it doesn't matter what's going on currently in your battlefield. Long as you know that you're in charge. And at any point in time, you can take charge of every situation, every circumstance, every conflict, everything that Satan has launched against you. You can take charge and walk in and walk out all of the benefits and the endowments and the very blessings of Almighty God that God has released into your life through the Word of God, by the Spirit of God, and through your agreement with Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. Let's jump in, but before we go into looking at how to be in charge, how to stay in charge of the battlefield of life, and let me tell you something, you staying in charge on the battlefield in life glorifies God. It absolutely brings joy to God when God looks down and see you fighting the good fight of faith. Fighting the good fight of faith and laying hold on eternal life. Laying hold on the principles of Jesus Christ. How he fought. How he defeated Satan. How he dealt with all of the conflicts when he was on the battlefield here in this life. And I'm telling you right now, Jesus seated at the right hand of God, the Holy Spirit within us, they are giving us strategies, they are giving us encouragements, they are giving us the stamina and the endurance to outlast and overcome every attack of the enemy and literally be that shining light to say to others, it can be done, it is being done, and you saying this, this is us saying to others through our victories on the battlefield of life, you can do this. 
Because to be victorious simply means that you have accepted what God has said about you. You have heard what God has said about you. You do what God says about you. And you deal with that devil the way God says, deal with that devil. Deal with the negatives of life. Deal with the things that bring depression and hurt. Deal with those demonic forces that do their best to take charge in your battlefield of life. And we ain't letting them. No more. In our ignorance, when we didn't know any better, they took charge. They took charge and tried to dominate us. But not no more. Oh, glory to God, we are professed giant killers for the glory of God. You are God's giant killer in the earth. Or in other words, you are God's problem solver. You are the one, yes, you, you, child of God, are the one that God is calling on to go in and turn the very tables on that enemy. To go in and make the necessary movements to make the necessary exampleship to show forth the exampleship of a giant killer. The exampleship of a kingdom of God problem solver. You've been equipped. And we're going to look at some things. There's some identity things that we just have to accept. It doesn't matter what's currently going on in your battlefield, on your battlefield. It doesn't matter so long as you are standing and having done all the stand, you're standing and you're dealing with that situation, you're dealing with conflict, you're dealing with the blessings the way Jesus dealt with. The blessings of ruling and being in charge on the battlefield of life, literally dealing with the enemy and putting him in his place when he attacks, dealing with the circumstances and dealing with whoever Satan is using and putting them in check in the name of Jesus with the truth of God's word on your battlefield of life. No, you are in charge. Hallelujah. I'm in charge. We, you and I, the rest of the body of Christ, everyone in the body of Christ, we have been authorized to take charge on the battlefield of life through Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, and we have the reputation of Jesus Christ as our example. We have the very way that Jesus did it. We see it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we are now getting better and better each and every day. Our prayer time is increasing. Our praise and worship time is just absolutely always fluid. Our obedience and willingness to God is growing and getting stronger every single day. Our love and output of love expressed to humanity by giving them and telling them the truth and then being the best example that we can be, pointing them to Jesus Christ, encouraging them, letting them know that God can perform in their lives all he needs. I'm talking about the Father God right now. All the Father God needs is some old-fashioned willingness and obedience. All he needs, I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ now, all Jesus needs is to hear you speaking like a giant killer, speaking the word of God, speaking God's word in the midst of whatever the circumstance is, whether you're knocking down Satan or whether you're maintaining the victory that God has given you over Satan. He just needs to hear you. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit right now. The Holy Spirit needs to hear you talking confidently, talking in faith, talking by faith, living and walking by faith. The Holy Spirit needs you to affirm and reaffirm your identity as a giant killer, your identity as a problem solver in the hand of God. You are in the hand of Almighty God as God's tool in the earth. And you got to realize that you are God's giant killer. Let's go through this definition of the word killer one more time. I want to just deal with this just for a second. Before we deal with being in charge on the battlefield of life. You are in charge on the battlefield of life. And because of that classification, because of that endowment from God, because of that decree from God, we are now so absolutely excited about learning how to manifest, how to think like one that's in charge on the battlefield of life. So number one, you are a killer. You are a solver of the problems of life. You kill satanic problems, satanic attacks. You are one that kills, definition number one. 
Definition number two, one that has a forceful, violent, or striking impact. This is how you come across against Satan when you are operating in rebuke mode, resist mode, and command mode in Jesus' name. Number three, you are one that is strikingly impressive and effective. This is you in God. This is you and your impact on the battlefield of life, in the battles of life. Glory to God. Number four, one that is extremely difficult to deal with. Satan looks at you being more like, talking more like, thinking more like, expecting more like Jesus, imitating Jesus. You have in his mind, when he looks at you and he throws his assessment concerning you, he says you are one that has become difficult. You are one that has become extremely hard to deal with because what's coming out of you right now is nothing but the promises and the verses and the chapters and all of the explanations of what it means to be a giant killer. And you are a killer. You're a killer of satanic problems. You're a killer of everything that Satan is doing and manifesting against your life. And you've gone on and you've become now uh, absolute. You literally rebuke Satan off of your family members. You command him, take your hands off of my family. You have now become the very spoken word of God concerning your family being redeemed being encouraged, being dealt with by God. You are praying God to send laborers, to send other Christians to your family members, especially those that you deal with on a regular basis and those that are maybe on an extended situation where you may not deal with them every day, but you got support from God. You have, through your prayer life, through your rebuke of Satan, you can speak from where you are concerning your family members wherever they are, and you can now turn the tables of satanic attack against their lives. That's a powerful place to be in. That's a powerful position to have in God. That's a powerful weapon to have in the name of Jesus. You know, like that guy, he, you know, he came asking Jesus to heal his servant. He said, look, Jesus, you don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus was like, you got great faith. Jesus said, go, your servant is healed. And when that, when that ruler got back to his house and found that his servant was healed, guess what? He asked, but what time? And it was the same time that he prayed and called on Jesus. It was the same time, the same hour that Jesus said, your servant liveth. I'm telling you right now, when you pray for your family, it happens immediately. God starts working on them immediately because you are not only in charge of your life on the battlefield, but you're praying for your family members, your friends, and your enemies to yield to, recognize, and respond to the very power of God so that they too can be in charge and take charge on the battlefield of their life. Look at this here. Number five, one, I'm still dealing with this word killer. And this may seem strong, but this is who you are. This is what God is making you in regards to dealing with Satan, satanic attacks, Satan's evil campaigns, Satan's temptations, Satan's, you know what I mean, attacks of depression and weakness and fear. You are one that causes death and devastation to every attack of the enemy. That's you. That's your behavior pattern right now. That's your response to satanic attack on the battlefield of life. Number six, severe and powerful. This is how Satan sees you, and this is how you got to see yourself. When you deal with demonic inf influences and demonic forces, and you command them in the name of Jesus, you got to see yourself as severe and powerful. And you are severe and powerful because that's the mindset that you have. That's the power that you have on the battlefield of life in the battlefield of life, speaking in the name of Jesus, speaking in the name of the Father, speaking in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let me get back. Listen, I'm telling you right now, oh, glory to God, it's only going to get better. Number seven, one that causes, and this is what you're doing to Satan's attacks. This is what you're doing to Satan when you 
begin to speak God's word, obey God's word, rebuke Satan with God's word. I mean, literally refuse to give in to his attacks, but choose to stand on the word of God, on the promise of God in obedience with growing willingness, growing obedience each and every day. That's a praise and worship moment right there. Hallelujah. Because we keep getting better and God loves us. God loves you. Oh, hallelujah. And God's love for you, God's love for me, God's love for us, it doesn't change. Nothing can change it. But we change as we get to understand the awesomeness of our Elohim, the awesomeness of our Yahweh, the awesomeness of our Jehovah, the self-existence, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Oh, sweet Jesus. You talk about relationships. You talk about it changing your perspective and changing your attitude in the battlefield of life, on the battlefield of life, that's what's happened to you. No more fear, no more worry, no more anxiety, no more of none of those attacks of the enemy being successful against you, no more embracing those things, no more accepting those things, no more identifying with those things. I don't care what Satan's attacked you with, who he's used, we identify as gladiators for God. We identify as warriors for God. We identify as God's police force in the earth. We identify good God Almighty as in charge on the battlefield of life. And you and I, you sir, you ma'am, are in charge through Jesus Christ, through the Father God, through the Holy Spirit in the battlefield of life. Oh, hallelujah. And then number eight. Now, let me hit seven again real quick. One that causes stress, exhaustion, pain, or misery. This is what you're doing when you're praying more. This is what you're doing to Satan when you're praising more. This is what you're doing to Satan's attacks when you're obeying more. This is what you're doing to Satan's attacks against other people when you start telling them about the goodness of God and what and how God sees them and what God is saying about them because they're covered in the blood of Jesus. You know, now it becomes easy to say to somebody, if you want God, and if you want to know that God is speaking favorably about you, give your life to Jesus Christ, get official with God, allow God to now forgive you and show you mercy and wash you in the blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You talk about new beginnings. Yeah, that's what we're talking about when we say we born again. You've been born again. You've been born from up above. You've been born from God. You are of God. And you, oh, hallelujah, you are in charge on the battlefield of life. Now, let's go on here. Because, you know, when you think like this, when you accept the definition of a killer, one that now, eight, definition number eight, one that kills especially habitually. So now, you're not this, you know, one hit wonder. You're not this one kill wonder. You are habitually stopping Satan in every attack that he launches against you. You are, in, listen, you are instructing your family, your friends, your enemies on how they can be in charge in the battlefields of life. You are showing them what they need to do. You are exampling to them what they need to do. And if they hate you for it, let them hate. They're going to stop hating when you start praying for them and getting results. You're going to be the one that they're going to say, if he can do it, if she can do it, I can do it. But you got to be bold. You got to just rise up and be who you are. You are God's giant killer in the earth. You are the one in charge on your battlefield of life. And you got the support of God. Oh, hallelujah. We got the support of God. Oh, yeah, no more fear, no more worry. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, as we now are dealing with Satan and as we continue to move forward, as we continue to just, you know, embrace and, 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 and get the word of God active in our expression, you know what I mean, how we talk, how we think, how we act, how we respond in the midst of conflict, we now are breaking all the bad habits that Satan had us in bondage to. You are breaking all of those bad habits. You know you are. You know you talking different. You know you praising different. You praying different. You walking different. Your expectations are different. Your expectations are at an all-time high for God performing their word in your life. 
That's because you now are realizing that the power of God through you, the power of God in you is stronger and greater than the attack of the enemy against you when you are standing firm in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Holy Spirit. You are working all things for the glory of God and God is working all things out for your good. Yeah, that's what it means to be in charge on the battlefield of life. Look at this here. Look at this here. So we got to break some bad habits. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just, I'm just going to deal with about seven of them. There's a whole lot more, but these seven is the Holy Spirit uh, has instructed me to give to you. These seven, these seven will keep you focused. These seven right here will keep you in a mindset that you'll always recover and you'll recover fast. That, that if the enemy comes in to try to distract you, try to discourage you, when you start operating in these, Oh, sweet Jesus, you're going to be like staying focused, staying habitual. And we want to be habitual in our display and in our absolute dealing with Satan and all of his attacks. You know, some people say, well, why do you always talk about warfare? Well, I'm talking about warfare now because we particularly are on this series, Giant Killer. You can't be a giant killer and you not experience warfare. You, you can't be a giant killer and expect that you're not going to be called to go to battle. And, I'm and in this day and age, we need some Christians that know how to battle. Not just stand for themselves, but help their families, help their friends, help their enemies to stand against satanic attacks. And things are getting worse out there, not getting better. You are getting better, not getting worse, in Jesus' name. So now, when we start talking about breaking bad habits, number one, there's seven of these guys. Number one, you and I have to avoid tempting some situations. Tempting situations. We got to avoid situations that cause us to end up defeated in that particular battle, defeated in that moment. We got to avoid them kind of situations, avoid them kind of attacks until we can now conquer those attacks sent against us and until we can now be triumphant in the midst of those situations and those attacks from the enemy. So avoid tempting situations. Number two. You and I have to replace unhealthy behaviors with healthy ones. We got to get rid of the unhealthy behaviors, disobedience, you know what I mean, doubt, fear. We got to replace them with obedience. We got to replace them with faith. We got to replace them with courage and bravery in God. So we want to replace unhealthy behaviors with healthy ones. Number three, we have to prepare and toughen up mentally. Okay, listen. I am not trying to be insensitive, but watch this here. But on the battlefield of life, you and I have to prepare spiritually better and keep preparing spiritually, and we have to toughen up mentally. You know, spiritually, you can be tough, you can be rugged, you can be, you know what I mean, a warrior. But mentally and emotionally, we got to toughen up. Because if we're going to conquer all the time, and if we're going to help others to conquer, guess what? We just got to, you know what I mean? We got to we gotta toughen up. And, and, and when we do, and you are, yeah, you in charge. That's how you be and manifest the proof of being in charge of the battlefields of life. Your battlefield of life, okay? And then number four, watch this here. Number four, when we start talking about breaking bad habits, you have to enlist godly support, okay? You don't want support like this, like what I'm about to say. You don't want this kind of support. Oh, can you do it all for me? No, you don't want that kind of support because you'll never grow. You'll never gain any type of, type of spiritual self-esteem. But the support that you want, you want the support and you want to say it like this here. Can you teach me? This is whoever's in your environment that knows what they're doing in the things of God. Can you teach me how to stand like a killer, like a problem solver, like a warrior in God. See, 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 when you when you get them type of people surrounding you, they're going to now be able to tell you how to rise up, how to stand strong, how to set people free in the name of Jesus, how to connect direct with Jesus Christ. That's what you need around you. 
You need some folks around you that's not going to pity party you. You need some folks around you that's going to say, okay, look, I know what you're dealing with. It's a tough situation right now, but you need to spiritually toughen up. You need to mentally toughen up. You need to emotionally toughen up so that you can start doing what God says do. You say, well, that's kind of harsh. That's kind of, that's kind of, you know what I mean, insensitive. No, no, that's not harsh. That's not insensitive. That is the instruction of God that will cause you to take charge in your battlefield of life. No, no more murmuring, complaining. No more, oh, God, I can't. I'm so afraid. I'm so defeated. Okay, are you tired of that? Have you had enough of that? Because if you've had enough of that, God says, I will show you how to take charge. When you are beat down by the enemy, when you are beat down by depression, when you are beat down by anxiety, worry, and fear, you are not in charge. Not in your actions, not in your experience. And God wants to turn that around. And God says, I'm here, and I'm talking to you to empower you to turn that around. Satan has had enough of dominating your life. God said, enough is enough. But God says, I got to get you to say, enough is enough. I need you to believe that if I put you in charge, I'll teach you how to walk in charge. And I'm telling you right now, God has decreed already that you and I, that we are in charge on the battlefield of life. Now we want God to show us, to teach us how to physically take charge. I love this. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Now, you got to enlist again support. That's number four. You got to get good support, good spiritual support around you. You need some winners around you. You need some folks that's going to encourage you. You don't need no haters around you. You don't need no jealous people around you. You don't need no doubters around you. You need people that are strong around you, and you need people that you can encourage to get stronger and that people can encourage you to get stronger. Because, see, when you start seeing that, when you start seeing those kind of victories, it strengthens your commitment to God, it strengthens your conviction in God, and it strengthens your faith in what God has done in you. And that keeps you moving, actually. That'll make you move a lot swifter to whooping on that situation and walking in the fullness of God's victory, putting a whole lot of joy in your life, okay? Now, number five, when we talk about breaking bad habits, you now have got to start conquering problems. No more are we afraid of the problems and the challenges that come against our lives. Challenge comes against our lives. We ain't afraid of it. Bring it, Satan. Bring it, life, all right? We have the Prince of Peace. We have the King of Kings, we have the Lord of Lords, and we have the Holy Ghost. We got the Holy Spirit, and we know how to pray, and we know how to praise. So God, the God we serve, will put all of the attack of Satan on pause while we come into the presence of God with prayer and praise. Come in quoting the word of God. Come in reminding God of what they promised. Come into the presence of God with prayer and praise, talking like, God, we see what Satan's doing, but we know he cannot bring his attack and his desire to fulfillment. He's not our prophet. He's not our God. This is us talking to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But you are our God, and we thank you for putting an end to this nonsense. And we resist it now, we rebuke it now, and we command it to die in Jesus' name. Because we killers. You a killer. I'm a killer. Yeah, I'm a killer of satanic problems, satanic attacks, satanic, you know what I mean, campaigns against my life. And I show people, I show people how to kill Satan, how to be strong and impacted, how to bring misery to Satan and his kingdom. And not only in your life, in my life, but in the lives of those that will listen and believe what God is saying. That's all they got to do. That's the only condition. They just got to they gotta hear it and believe it. And then God can go to work. I love it. Okay? So we are here to conquer problems. Now, number six, talking about breaking <coughs> bad habits. Number six, reward yourself. Oh, sweet Jesus. For, and I wrote this here for small steps. Now, listen, small steps, medium steps, big steps, it doesn't matter the steps that you are taking and making towards 
being a better giant killer, growing in the things of God, whatever steps you are taking, small, medium, or large, reward yourself. Re throw yourself a party. Go out there and buy yourself something. Go out there and do something that you like to do that's not unrighteous and ungodly. Reward yourself every time you improve. I think I'm going to say that one again. The Holy Ghost says, say it again. Reward yourself with something godly. Reward yourself with something righteous. Reward yourself when you do something that conquers Satan. Reward yourself when you do something that evidences you are growing in your relationship with God, in your display of obedience to God. Reward yourself. In Jesus' name. Don't wait for somebody else to reward you. I mean, you know, God going to reward us when we, when we transition. But on this earth, don't wait for somebody to reward you. Reward yourself. Because, here's the condition. Because you are taking steps toward greatness. Steps toward God. Steps toward development. Steps toward being in and taking charge on your battlefield of life. Oh, that's a wonderful thing. And then number seven, we talk about breaking bad habits. Make all of those six your new identity. Oh, glory to God. Listen, make avoiding tempting sensation. Ten <laughs> Excuse me. All right. I get so excited. My, my, my words can't, my brain can't keep up with what my spirit is doing. All right, so number one, seven things. Okay, this is what we want to make our identity. Avoiding tempting situations. We want to make our identity replacing unhealthy behaviors with healthy behaviors. We want to make our identity preparing and toughening up. Glory to God. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, the whole nine. All right, we want to prepare and toughen up in the midst of the battle. So that we conquering and not being conquered. Number four, we want to enlist good, godly kingdom support. We want support from people that win. We want support from people that are doing and experiencing victories on the battlefield of life. Oh, sweet Jesus. We want to become those that conquer. This is our identity. We are conquerors of problems conquerors of the attacks of the enemy we believe this because we're experiencing this we're doing this so well, are you conquering all of them we done conquered enough we're gonna get to the rest of them <laughs> okay look at this here you never quit you never give up you're a giant killer you are in charge on the battlefield of life and god has put you in charge god has given you the authority and the dominion and the ability through Jesus Christ to not only be in charge, but to take charge on the battlefield of life. And then we want to now not only enlist good support, this is our new identity now, but we want to now not only enlist good support, but recognize good support. All right. And sometimes you may have to deal with folk that's coming in there with doubt and fear and weakness and all of that stuff and say, hey, 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 you polluting my environment. I don't need to hear that. I just came from that. I got free from that. You know what I mean? Now, if you want, if you want to change things, I'm going to show you how. The minute they reject it, leave them alone. If they don't want God's help, let them know. You are rejecting God's help. You're murmuring against God. You're refusing God's help. And Satan's got you in that kind of way. But if you want to change the outcomes of your battles, the outcomes of your life, then you got to receive the incomes of God's word and knowledge and God's wisdom and God's ability. All right. Reward yourself for small steps, medium steps, large. This is your new identity. You making steps, you making moves for God. And then conquer problems. Tell me right now, every time you conquer a problem and then you reward yourself, can you imagine living a life where you are just conquering problems and rewarding yourself? Hallelujah. Reward yourself. What you like to do that's righteous and godly. Reward yourself. God will bless you to do it.
Why? Because you keep conquering problems in the name of Jesus. You keep conquering problems in the name of the Father. You keep conquering problems in the name and with the help of the Holy Spirit. You keep conquering problems with this new identity that you have embraced as God's giant killer. You work for God. You ought to hear what God is saying about you. Yes, you ought to hear <laughs> what the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is saying about you because you've adopted this new identity, because you've accepted this new identity. You look at that picture in the background, and you see it on airplanes and helicopters. That's the support of God in your life. Don't be afraid of Satan. Don't be afraid of the battle. Don't be afraid of the attacks of the enemy. You got support from God. You are of God. We are of God. Believe that and act like it. Because when you believe that and act like it and talk like it and expect it, that's what triggers the power of God. You, you do all of that and chase that with some praise and some worship and some willingness and obedience. That proves to God that you mean and you accept what God is saying about you. And you need to hear what God is saying about you. Yeah, you. I'm talking to you right now. You that's large and in charge on the battlefield of life. God's talking about you. And I'm going to tell you what God is saying. I'm going to tell you exactly what God is saying. And you can find this in Joshua chapter 14, 6 through 14. This is what the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit is saying about you. And you need to start saying this about you on the battlefield. So that you can take charge because you are in charge. Okay, all right, let me, get my, let me get my focus right. You are in charge on the battlefield of life. And this is what God is saying about you. Number one, God is saying, you've been chosen by me. This is what the Father is saying about you. Jesus is saying, you have been chosen by me. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. You have been chosen by me. In other words, Elohim says, you've been chosen by us. And you've been chosen for good purpose. You've been chosen with good reason. You've been chosen with a destiny and a future. You've been chosen to be in charge on the battlefield of life. In the conflicts of life. Look at this here, number two. The question that God is saying and the question that you got to ask yourself is, what's in your heart? Do you believe what God is saying about you? Do you believe it enough that you'll start talking like it? Woo! Glory to God. Even if physically you don't even see what God has promised you in your reality. Speak it into your reality in Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Listen, listen. I I'm just going to say this here. For you and I, we have to learn to do like God did, to do like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to do like Elohim, the judges, the magistrates, the rulers, the divine ones, to do like the divine ones did in the beginning. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. God was speaking. They were speaking into darkness and voidness. So if in your current situation, what God has promised, if God has promised you to be the head and physically you on the bottom, Start talking like God and start saying, in Jesus' name, I am the head and not the tail. Then look to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and say, I don't know how you're going to work it out, but I thank you for working it out. You promised me headship. Thank you for making me the head. You promised me the ability to be in charge on the battlefield. Thank you for giving me the knowledge, the strength, the courage, and the ability to be in charge. I need to see the end result. And you got to speak the end result before you see anything change in the physical realm. That's faith. That excites the fool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That excites the fool. When you talk like that, when you believe like that, that excites the Father. That excites the Lord Jesus. That excites the Holy Spirit. Like nothing else that you can do will do. Mm. And you got to just hear what God is saying about you. I was sharing with somebody, you know what I mean? Sometimes you got to, no, I'm gonna not going to say sometimes. All the time you got to hear what God is saying about you in the midst of your battle. 
And then sometimes, and I'm going to say all the time, you need to hear what your enemies are saying about you in the midst of the battle. Or even before the battle takes place. And we got to go to Gideon for that. God chopped his army down from 32,000 down to 300. And he lost, listen to this, he lost 31,700 men that came to fight due to fear and unskillfulness. He had 300. And Gideon was like, all right, wait, Lord, we're going to whoop all of the Midianites and all of these folks with 300? Lord, are you sure? And Gideon said, Gideon said, God, you know I'm the least in my family. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm a scrub. But God says, but you love me and you trust me. And you had the smarts to try to hide your crops from the Midianites during harvest time. So, so Gideon is like saying, 300 though, Lord? And God says, I'm going to do through you and 300 what it would take tens of thousands to do. And so Gideon was like, well, God, okay, I, you done brought us this far. I don't know about your math, though, God, but I, I trust you. I'm just paraphrasing a little bit. But then God says, okay, let me help you out, Gideon. I want you and a couple of your chief numero uno homeboy supporters. I need you, the ones that you've enlisted support from, I need y'all to sneak down into the camp of the enemy so that you can hear what they saying about you. And God gave one of them fellas down there a dream. And they saw a barley loaf roll down the hill and smashed all of the tents of the enemy. And the guy said, and this is nothing more than the sword of the Lord and Gideon. God gave them guys a dream and they were scared. You wait till you see what your enemies are thinking and saying about you. They know you getting stronger. They know you getting wiser. They know you're getting bolder. They know your faith is growing. And they see the change. They're not going to say nothing to you. They're not going to tell you the growth and the development that they're seeing. They're, they're bugging out. They're freaking out over it. What the heck is going on with them? And it is God and God's development. It is you changing your identity. It is you changing what you believe the end is going to be like. Your end results in every conflict, you see victory, you see conquering, you see support from God. Oh, hallelujah, do I need to keep going? This is all your new identity. Oh, sweet Jesus. So as we continue going on, this is what God is saying about you. Oh, God. But you got to know what's in your heart. And what's in your heart should be nothing but faith and trust in God. Number three, this is what God is saying to you. Every promise is yours. This is what God is saying about you. Every promise is yours. You got to have that in your heart. You got to believe that. And then with the mindset and the identity of a person in charge, the one in charge in the battlefield of your life, the one in charge on the battlefield of your life. You've taken charge in the name of Jesus Christ with the word of God, with the power of the Holy Spirit, and with the guidance, and with the mentorship, and with the managing of the Holy Spirit. Telling you what to do. Please spend more time in prayer. Please spend more time praising. Please spend more time in the word of God. Please spend more time doing something for God. Oh, hallelujah. All right. So God says, third thing, every promise is yours. This is what God is saying about you and to you. Number four, God says, I have kept you alive and strong. Woo! <laughs> okay. If you ain't dead, then God has kept you alive. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the situation is trying to make. You feel like, I don't care what Satan is putting in your mind by way of thoughts, God has kept you alive and God has kept you strong. And you're getting stronger each and every day, every time you hear the word of God. You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, strength comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and then acting on that word. And then your faith 
in the ability of God through you. Now, when you see in God answer prayer, you're seeing God defeat the enemies that's coming against you, spiritual and physical, that causes you to get more firm and committed to God, and it turns you into an expressive, giant killer, problem solver for Almighty God. Oh, yes, you are now one of those in that category of individuals through faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that has taken charge in the midst of their battlefield in life, your battlefield of life. And you're going to teach others how to take charge in their battlefields of life. Number five, this is what God is saying about you. Your strength is increasing and you're not falling off. Oh, no, 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 no. You're getting stronger as your connection with God is unbroken, unsevered. Satan don't have what it takes to break your relationship. He's a faker. He comes in there trying to act like he got it cranked up like that. But you got the support of God. You got the ability of God. You have the authority of God. You are of God. Look at this here. Look at this here. Number six. This, this is what God is saying about you. Number six. I'm with you. And God says, believe that. I am with you. You need me to do some miracles? Send up some praise. Send up some thanksgiving. Send up some obedience. Send up some service. That's godliness. Okay. Number seven. This is what the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are saying about you right now in the midst of your battles. On your battlefield, that you dealing with conquering Satan and all of his demonic attacks. God is saying you are blessed of God. You got to believe that. It don't matter what the physical circumstance, don't matter how intense the battle is. You need to start saying, I am blessed of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I felt that way. You got to say that, but you got to believe it. And God says, you say it and believe it. I'll perform it. This is what the Father is saying to you. You say it and believe it, I'll perform it. This is what Jesus Christ is saying to you and saying about you. You believe it and say it and I'll perform it. That's what the Holy Ghost is saying to you and about you. About you, they're saying, look at them speak the word of God in faith. Look at them obey the word of God in faith and love. Look at them rebuke Satan in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Look at how they're responding. Look at their attitude in the midst of battle. This is what God is saying about you. And then number eight, it's the last thing, but God's saying this all about you. God is saying, I'm talking about Elohim, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Saboa, Shammah, God is near. The self-existent God is near, present. Sidkenu, the self-existent God is your righteousness. Or in other words, I'm going to do this for you because your righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Your righteousness is not based in your performance being perfect. Your righteousness is sealed in the blood of Jesus, sealed in the, 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 the uh, cross of Jesus, sealed in the, in the, what's the word, the sacrifice of Jesus. Your faith in that changes your identity. Jehovah Saboeth, the self-existent, is your commander in, in arms and the Lord of hosts, the God of military strategies. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> and they are saying to you, God is saying to you, you have a different spirit about you since you've been doing all this praying and all this identity changing. You got a different spirit about you. Stuff, Satan can't come in here and rattle you like he used to. You stronger. You stronger spiritually. You stronger mentally. You're stronger emotionally. You're stronger in your behavior. 
you conquering some stuff for my glory and honor. <laughs> this is what God is saying about you. And I'm about to close. I'm going to close with this one. But you got to go with me. Come on. Go with me to the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 24. Numbers 14, 24. Listen to this. But my servant Caleb, and this is God talking about Caleb, but this is what God is saying about you right now. My servant Edward, my servant John, put your name in there. My servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, he, and because he had that spirit, he has followed me fully. Sweet Jesus. Him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it, because he chose to believe. And that's you and I. Caleb is who Numbers is talking about, specifically, but universally, put your name in there. Hallelujah. God is looking at you and the decision that you've made. God is looking at me and the decision that I've made to wholly follow them, to literally trust in their promises and their ability to change our reality, to bring us into that promised land inheritance. That's the promise of God. And in the midst of delays, we haven't fallen off. We haven't grown dim and weak. We haven't turned into doubters and, and murmurers and complainers. No, we standing strong, staying strong. Why? Because we in charge in this battlefield of life. And when delays take place, especially delays beyond our control, we remain faithful to God. We remain steadfast, unmovable, unshakable, always abounding. That's why the next time you see a giant killer, giant killer is still on their game. They still in there. Because that attitude has been built by God and their identity is in God. Well, my time is almost gone. I'm about done. Listen, we love you. We appreciate you. God is working in you. God is saying some things about you. And what God is saying about you is absolutely true. And it is absolutely becoming your reality. And so we just thank and love and praise God. Now listen, my time is almost all gone. Hey, I need you to pray for your family. Pray for your friends. Pray for your enemies. I need you to allow God to cause you to take charge in your battlefield of life. Well, I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International here in Hartford, Connecticut. Be sure to send this message to a friend, but be sure to listen to it about two or three times. A lot of information in this message, but this message is true and is true to you and for you. God has ordained that you be in charge on your battlefield of life. God bless you. Till next time, shalom.